So we're going to start having a look at the binomial distribution. And to start this off, we're going to have a recap of probability trees uh, or tree diagrams, uh, which hopefully you have seen at GCSE. So probability trees are used to find probabilities of a combination of events during uh, occurring sorry, at the same time. If you want two things to happen, then we end up multiplying the probabilities going across our tree diagram. And usually that is described using the word and. So if we're wanting to get first and wins, then we will be multiplying those. To have a combination of different sets of outcomes together, uh, then we're going to be uh, usually you using the word or and we're going to be doing addition with those probabilities. So here we have the turnout of a motor rally is dependent upon the weather. On a rainy day, the probability of a big turnout is 0.4. But if it does not rain, then the probability of a big turnout increases to 0.9. The weather forecast gives a 0.7 probability that it will rain on the day of the race. So to start off with, because the raining does not depend on the outcome, but the outcome depends on the raining, that tells us that the weather is going to be our first branches. Now, when we do this, we need it so that our branches are touching at the beginning. So you can't have this part here being separated. Also, remember that your outcomes go at the ends of your sticks. So we're going to have raining and not raining, which is denoted by this R dash. Now, depending on whether it's raining or not, is the turnout. And now from our outcomes from the weather, we're going to have two more sticks. Again, these sticks need to be touching near where it says rain. And the same sticks need to be drawn for if it does not rain. And now our turnout can either be big or not big. And that's the same for if it doesn't rain, we can either have a big turnout or not a big turnout. Now, the probabilities go on the sticks of our probability tree. So the probability that it rains is 0 0.75. So 0 0.75 is going to go on the rain. And because these two sticks touch here, that means that this stick and this stick here need to add up to 1, which tells us that the probability that it does not rain is 0 0.25. Then we're looking at the turnout. Well... On a rainy day, the probability of a big turnout is 0.4. So rain and big turnout is 0.4. And again, because these two sticks touch here, that means that this probability here is going to be 0.6. But if it does not rain, the probability of a big turnout increases to 0.9. So not rain and a big turnout, that stick there is 0.9. So that means that not big, because these two are touching, is going to be 0.1. So that's our probability tree. So then we're wanting to find the probability that there is a big turnout and it rains. So we're looking at it raining and there's a big turnout. And because we're using the word and, that means that we are going to multiply these probabilities together. So we're going to have 0.75 times 0.4. So in the normal calculator bit of our calculator, we're going to have 0.75 times 0.4, which gives us 0.3. So then we're asked to find the probability that there is a big turnout. So there's two ways that that can happen. We could have that it rains 
and there's a big turnout so that is our 0 0.75 times 0 0.4 Or there is another way that we can get a big turnout. So we could have that it doesn't rain and there's a big turnout. So because it's or, we're going to add and then we want it to be not raining and so times there's a big turnout. So then we can type this into our calculator. So 0 0.75 times 0.4 plus 0.25 times 0.9 which gives us 0.525 so then for part d we're trying to find the probability that it rains given that there is a big turnout so we're only looking at the big turnouts so that means that we're looking at our answer to part c so a big turnout is 0 0.525 and the probability that that big turnout is a rainy one is 0 0.75 times 0 0.4 which is our answer to part B so that's going to be 0 0.3 and then when we put that in our calculator 0 0.3 divided by 0 0.525 that gives us 0 0.5 five seven one to three significant figures so now i'd like you to pause the video and give the now you try question a go okay so hopefully you've paused the video and you've given the now you try question a go so here we've got melanie is a sixth form student who has two classes with homework due on tuesday the probability that she completes her maths homework if two, is two fifths if she has done her English homework and one sixth if she has not done her English homework. The probability that she has done her English homework is seven tenths. So because the English doesn't depend on the maths, English goes first. And we can see there that we've got seven over ten and because those two touch they have to add up to one. So not done her English homework is three out of ten. Uh, so then if she has done her English then it's two-fifths uh, probability that she has done her maths. So that means it's three-fifths probability that she hasn't. And then if she hasn't done her English, it's one-sixth probability that she does her maths. And that means that it's five-sixths that she doesn't do it. So that's our probability tree. Then we're trying to use our diagram to uh, find the probability that she has not done any homework well, there's only one way that she can do that, which is that if she doesn't do her English and she doesn't do her maths, so we times those probabilities together and that gives us a quarter. For part C, use the diagram to find the probability that Melanie does exactly one piece of homework due in on Tuesday. So if she's doing one piece of homework, then if she has done her English, then she won't do her maths or she won't do her English, but she will do her maths. So that means that we've got seven tenths times three fifths, or three tenths times one sixth, which when we put it in our calculator, we get 0 0.47. Then for part D, we're trying to find the probability that she has completed her English homework, given that she has not completed her maths homework. So we're only looking at not completed the maths homework. So there's two ways that she could have done that. She could have completed her English homework and not done her maths homework. Or she could have not done her maths homework, uh, her English homework, sorry, and not done her maths homework. So that means on the denominator, we've got 7 out of 10 times 3 over 5 plus 3 out of 10 times 5 over 6. And of that, we're looking for English homework and not the maths homework. So that means that we're looking at this top way here, here, English, but not maths. So 7 over 10 times 3 over 5 goes on the top, which gives us 42 out of 67 or 0 0.627 to three significant figures. So bearing in mind that uh, with probability trees, you can have such situations as 
uh, picking things out of a bag and in which case you will have to be careful then as to whether there is replacement or things are not being replaced in the bag. Uh, make sure that you're looking out for that key information in the question. If things are being replaced so that the probability is remaining constant, if we end up picking things several times, for instance, rolling a dice, if I want to know how many sixes or what's the probability of getting two sixes out of 30 rolls of a dice, uh, that's going to be really hard to do with a probability tree because I'm going to have to have 30 uh, lots of data coming one after the other and quickly that amounts to a lot of information that you're trying to show on a probability tree. Uh, which is where the binomial distribution comes in. So we're going to have a look at that in the next video. Thank you very much for listening.